So there are a bunch of unique items that can be really useful while you're leveling. Most likely when you are leveling during the beginning of a league you won't have access to these but they are really useful if you're re-rolling later on and if you're lucky you'll get one of them and they aren't that expensive early on either. Um, during Act 1 or between Act between level 1 to 12-ish there are a couple of weapons and a few other small items that you can use. Last Resort, you can use that one right away. So this one is really useful if you're like re-rolling and you have a Last Resort lying around. You can use that one through the entire Act 1 and you don't need to be looking for other rare items. In You can also get Medjinord Skirtle at level 8 or you can use it at level 8. And the Princess and Fairgrave's Tricorn. The Princess is better than Last Resort simply because it has the physical damage as extra cold damage modifier on it. So it's going to give you a lot more damage than Last Resort would. And you can use it for a little while, but we're going to be swapping these later on anyway. There are of course other unique items. I'm going, only going to be listing a few of them. The ones that I us usually use when I level a new character. In Act 2 or around level 20 or so, you can use the Deep One's Hide, which is a shield and it gives you physical damage. So if you prefer leveling with a shield, then you can get this one. I usually level with, well, two weapons and I stick to, I stick to uh, claws and I stick to foils usually. There is a ring called Barracks Pass, but Early in the league this one will be expensive, later on it's not going to be expensive. So if you're re-rolling later on in a league, or, well yeah, the Barracks Pass Ring can be really really good because it gives you a lot of cold damage. The Tempestious Steel is a sword that is also really really good at this point. When you get to at level 24 to 30-ish, something like that, there are a couple of good items that you can use. Blood Boil is another ring uh, that is also really, really good, but it's a lot cheaper than, than Barracks Pass. It's not as good as Barracks Pass, but it's cheaper. And you can use that one as level 24. Prism Weave is a really, really, really good belt. Like, you will use this one. If you have a Prism Weave, you will use this one from level 25 up until level 60, 70 or so, until you find a better at that point. But Prism Weave is incredibly good because it gives you so much damage. And that is really what we're going to be looking for mostly on the items we're using when we're leveling. Wake of Destruction and Lion Eyes Paws are both good options for boots. You will notice there's a theme that I'm going for here when it comes to unique items. Or when it comes to items in general. And it is that I have a lot of added damage to them. And again, the added damage is important when we are leveling because that is a big source of our damage. Now, another item that you can get at level 28 is Eivor's Mirage, which is a sword. And this is arguably, like, this is one of my favorite items in the game. It is so good. I've been on and on about this game, this item on when I'm streaming or in general. So, if you have two of these, then you can use these even if they are like at level 28 weapon. Is it 26 or is it 28? No. It's 26. Okay, so at 26 even. Um, if you have a good roll on these, you see they have they can vary quite a lot. It goes between 40 and 55 and it can have between 16 and 22 attack speed. The uh, lightning damage also varies a lot. So you, you preferably want a good roll on these. But these weapons this weapon doesn't do that much damage on its own but the elemental damage with attack skills on it is insane and this is the reason why we want so much added damage on the rest of our gear because if you're using Eivor's Mirage and you're getting good rings and you have Wake of Destruction or Lionized Paws and you're using Prism Weave and so on and so on this weapon scales incredibly good it scales really really good and so it's important, when you're getting one of these though, it is important that you maintain the rest of your gear. So make sure you get a lot of added damage on your items. 
At level 36 or 31 or around between 30 and 40, there are two gloves that you can use. You can use Tomb Fist right at level 36. And Tomb Fist is one of the options that we are going to be using later on. If you can't afford Shaper's Touch or have, have a really good pair of Hunter Influence, I think it is. Uh, whatever, there's rare uh, influence that you can get on gloves that gives frenzy charges. If you don't have that or Shaper's Touch, then you can use Tomb Fist with a Murderous Eye Jewel. And you can use this already at level 36. However, at level 31 you can get Shadows and Dust. And on their own, it doesn't look like they are super good. You get Rampage from them though. And I actually prefer using these. While I'm leveling, I prefer using these over any other pair of gloves. All the way up until when I start swapping to the original items that I'm going to be using in the build. Because Rampage is really really fun and really really useful while you're running through areas. Later on, while you reach around level 60 or so, between level 60 or 70, you're going to be able to use a lot of the intended... a lot of the original items that I mean to use in the build. You can use Starconias pretty early at level 60. You can use Bloodseeker at level 62. You can use Darkray Vectors at level 65. And I really, really recommend as soon as you hit level 60, get St Starconias if you can find one or afford one, if it's cheap at that point. As soon as you hit 65, get Dark Ray Vectors. Dark Ray Vectors is the best pair of boots in the game for this build. And they are super cheap because no one else uses them. If you can, this is something that I mention a lot on stream, but it's easy to miss. If you can, then you should run lab and get the enchantment on your uh, Dark Ray Vectors that gives you elemental penetration if you haven't killed recently. This enchant is incredibly strong and when it comes to boot enchants there's only 16 of them in the labyrinth. So it is pretty easy to farm actually. If you get a twice enchanted prophecy which is the one that gives you an extra use of the enchantment mechanism in the end of the lab and if you pick up the, the Dark Shrines on the way, then you can potentially get up to 3 enchants every run. And since there's only 16 possible outcomes for boots, then the odds of getting it is pretty high. Like, the odds of getting it isn't pretty high, but the odds of getting it after a couple of runs is pretty good. Of course you want to be using Shaper's Touch. Ideally you want to be using Shaper's Touch when you reach level 68. However, early on in the league, Shaper's Touch are probably going to be expensive. These will be really, really cheap later on, but since they changed the Atlas and Shaper isn't farmable in the same way as he was before, then Shaper's Touch are expensive early on in the league, but you want to get these later on. Now, I've gone through a bunch of unique items, but... I don't expect anyone to have these unique items during a league start. Some of them are really affordable and you can buy them while you're leveling, but most likely you're going to be using rares. So I'm going to go through a couple of rare items that, rare types of items that we're going to be looking for. And I'm going to start with jewelry. So if you look at the rings, the lower level ones are on the left with, with the rings and amulets and belt. All the lower level ones are on the left side and the higher level ones are on the right and it progresses slowly. So if you look at the first ring there, the blood grip, it has physical damage, it has physical damage and cold damage. This is the type of modifiers that we are looking for on our jewelry. So, and also life of course. And you'll see that as I progress, I get better and better cold damage and lightning, cold damage and lightning, cold damage and lightning, cold damage and physical is, uh, is usually the better combo. Um, but you see, once you get level 30 something, no 20, when you get to the sewer in Act 3, when you finish the sewer and you run through the uh, the area to the, the ebony barracks, there is a recipe for uh, the, cra uh, the crafting recipe for physical damage. And 
you shouldn't forget that these recipes exist because these are also really useful when you are leveling. You don't want to spend too much currency on crafting stuff, but it can be really useful when you're finding the right items. So these are items that I used while I leveled the character I used for this video. Uh, and, and well, you see, this is the type of items you want to be looking for when you're leveling. Now the same is basically, it's basically the same type of modifiers you're looking for on amulets. So if you look at the first one, I have some cold damage on it, I have some life on it. Um, you also might want to be looking for, for stats, attributes on the amulets, because sometimes when you are leveling and your skill gems, you need to level your strength gems and you need to level your intelligence gems, then you might not meet the requirements for them, but the amulets is a good spot for extra intelligence and strength on them. So if you can get agate amulets or onyx amulets, then those are the the best ones to have uh, because it's easier to max your or it's easier to meet your attribute requirements with them. And you'll see it's the same thing here: uh, low cold damage on the first one, and then like get as much added damage as possible on them and you'll see on the last one there that I have I have 10 to 19 fire I have 5, 5 to 11 cold and 4 to 44 lightning the reason why I don't have physical damage crafted on it is because it's a lot more expensive to craft that one than it is to craft the elemental uh, modifiers so ideally you want one that has physical damage on it and then craft a elemental modifier on it but it doesn't it's not a big deal but the physical one is slightly more expensive and for belts, we're mainly looking for life, really. We want life and we want the elemental damage with attacks. If we can get both of those, then that's really, really nice. We obviously want resists and all of that as well. Uh, you'll see on the first one, I have a little bit of elemental damage with attacks. On the second one, I have 30, which is... The, this, the second one is really, really good for, for damage. And on the last one, I have a lot of life and I have some strength, but I don't have that much elemental damage with attack. But this is the type of belt that you're looking for. Early on, you might want to go for something like a Rustic Sash because it gives you some extra damage. Later on, you might want to swap to either Heavy Belts if you need the strength or Leather Belts because you're going to need the armor. When we start doing Breach, no, when we start doing Abysses and, and so on, we will drop uh, Stygian Vices and the goal is to be using a Stygian Vice later on. On the belt you want to be looking for life resists and elemental damage with attacks. When it comes to weapons, when it comes to rare weapons, it is very similar to how we look at rings. We want as much flat damage as possible. Well, we don't want only flat damage, but if you look at the rings, the, starting on the left side is the the not the ring, the weapons, the weapon that I used at level 12. So it is really important when you are leveling any melee character that you maintain your gear. It is super important. If you end up in Act 6 or 7 and you feel like you're doing no damage, then most likely you don't have you haven't upgraded your gear as you've been playing the game so when you are running through the the campaign pick up all the identity uh, the identify scrolls that you can find and use them whenever you see a, a weapon type that you want to use then if you have alchemies then you can pick it up and toss some uh, some uh, some whetstones on it if it's a good base you don't want to do this with all the bases but if it's a good base that you that you want to use and then toss an alchemy on it but with all the rare weapons that you can find all the rare swords all the rare claws pick them up and identify them because it's really really important to keep looking for new weapons new and better weapons now the same goes for all gear really but the weapons matter a lot so if you see on the, the left one here, um, that is what I used at level 12. And then I upgraded at level 22 to one that is a lot better. And you'll see that the... Well, basically you want to have increased fizz and added fizz on it. Early on in the first two acts, you won't be able to craft anything. But again, at in act three, when you get to the sewer or when you enter the ebony barracks, you get the added physical damage or the physical damage crafting modifiers. 
So at that point, if you find weapons that have a high increased fizz or a high added fizz on them, then don't forget that you can craft physical damage on them if you want to. Again, the physical damage modifier is more expensive than the the cold or the, the elemental modifiers to craft, but it is also usually better. Uh, so you see, I crafted the physical damage on the third one there, and on the fourth one, I had I found one with really really good physical and decent increased physical. It had good attack speed. That is also important. Don't only you shouldn't only look at the added physical damage. So the gouger there on the far right side, the, the plague thirst gouger, it has 160 in max damage. But you should also don't forget to look at the attack speed. Sometimes there are there are some bases that have 1.3 attacks per second. Try to avoid those. Try to use the bases that have 1.5 or more uh, attack speed. Because even if you end up finding one that has really good damage but slow attack speed, even if it does more DPS, then it feels worse when you're playing. And then I slightly upgraded all the time. And at level 55 and 62, you see I had a lot better stuff than what I started with. The claw down there on the right side was really unexpected. Um, that is actually a claw that I could probably use while mapping. It doesn't have that much DPS, but it, when you get Hellion's Paws, Hellion's Paws are useful um, for a while until you start using Imperial Claws. But the claw that I found there on level 62 is a good one. When you are level 62 though, if you can afford uh, Bloodseeker or Touch of Anguish, I think Touch of Anguish is 68, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, you can also get Wasp Nest, I think that one is earlier. If you can get one of those, then you can use that instead. But when you're looking for rare ones, keep in mind that you need to upgrade all the time. And the same goes for all type of items, really. On the other stuff, on the armor, on the helmet, on the boots, on the gloves, on all of those things, then you're mainly going to be looking for life and resist. You can get damage on gloves as well, of course. And if you use the unique versions of all those things, then there are unique versions that give damage on them. But generally on the other items you want to be looking for, life and resist. One thing that is easy to miss when it comes to items is your flasks. The flask can make a big difference when it comes to DPS. And during the campaign there are three flasks that we want to look for. The first one is a silver flask, the second one is a diamond flask, and the last one is a sulfur flask. You get the silver flask in Act 5, the diamond in Act 7, and the last one, uh, the sulfur flask in Act 10. Ideally, you want to have immunity to freeze on one of them. The others don't really matter that much. When it comes to life flask, I try to look for a life flask that has bleed immunity on it. Um, that is incredibly useful both when you're leveling and afterwards as well. Always try to have some form of bleed immunity. If you're getting a jewel that has corrupted blood immunity on it, then you don't need it on a flask, but otherwise you should have it on your flask. I think we're done with items and so let's head on to the passive skill tree.